10,191 year, the planet Arrakis, the universe's only source of spice, an invaluable substance that prolongs human life and provides interstellar travel, is undergoing tremendous changes. Once it was a peaceful land, but then the Harkonnen house took over it, bringing pain, devastation, and suffering. The locals, the Freemans, did not want to obey the enemy, which is why they went to live in the desert and waged a covert war with the Baron who heads the Harkonnen house. Now the Padisha Emperor Shaddam IV decided to give the planet into the possession of Duke Leto, ruler of the planet Caladan. In fact, the Emperor realized that the Atreides family was a threat to his power and planned their destruction through deception and subsequent coup. Without realizing it, Leto plans to bond with the Freemen and bring peace to the world. Leto's son, Paul, constantly learns from his mother to be strong, since Jessica is one of the sisters of the Bene Gesserit, a special order with unique abilities, both physical and mental. A little later, Duncan goes on reconnaissance, and Paul continues to train hard with his mentor, although he argues with his father about the future, not wanting to become a duke. At night, the Reverend Mother arrives at the Atreides' house, having learned of Paul's visions. According to genetics, Jessica should have given birth to a daughter capable of becoming Kisats. Hadaraka was a superhuman messiah, but the woman disobeyed the order and, out of great love, gave birth to a daughter. Now Paul must face the Reverend Mother face to face and undergo the horrifying ordeal of Gamjabar. Experiencing unbearable pain, the guy demonstrates his humanity and completes the task. Atreides' family packs up and sets off for Arakeen, a former Harkonnen stronghold on Arrakis. The Mentat who arrived earlier meets the family and escorts them to their new home. The local people of the Fremena greet them, but Sufir asks not to trust them, as this is not sincere. In a private conversation, the mother informs Paul that they are meeting not only the new owners, but also Lisan al-Gaib, the future prophet who arrived from another world suggesting that the son of Jessica and Leto is the same person. A little later, the concubine chooses a maid from Fremenok, drawing attention to Shadout Mapes. The incredulous woman prepares to attack Jessica, but realizes that she has extraordinary power, and decides to comply by handing over a special blade to her hands. After taking a walk in the yard, Paul returns to the bedroom and listens to a lecture about giant worms that live in deserts and how to move without attracting their attention. At the same time, an insect appears in the room, which attacks the guy. After destroying it, he realizes that it is a hunter-seeker, which means that there is a traitor in their house playing a double game. The Mentat asks for forgiveness for the oversight and is ready to resign, but Leto does not accept her, demanding to be more attentive, because his son's life is at stake. Meanwhile, the Reverend Mother goes to see Baron Vladimir Harkonnen, without hindering the impending attack. Realizing that Paul is a special boy, the woman asks that Jessica and her son be spared during a military coup on Arrakis. Vladimir agrees, but after that he orders to exterminate the Atreides family, observing the conditions of the Reverend Mother. Later, Leto learns about the business that the Harkonnen family ran on this land. They left the old equipment and part of the reservoirs for the universal source of melange, but the Leto family is obliged to continue collecting the spice in order to start making money on it. Duncan, who arrived on the planet in advance with a reconnaissance group, wandered the deserts for a long time and returned to the owner's stronghold to tell about life among the freemen. Also, the leader of the Sand Tribe, Stilgar, arrived at the palace in order to discuss the rules for living on one planet. Summer promises not to interfere in the life of the freemen, but at the same time asks to be allowed to continue collecting melange, since it is of inestimable importance for everyone living in the expanses of space. As he leaves, Stilgar tells Paul that he knows who he is, hinting that the guy is a prophet who can change the course of history. A little later, Duncan shows the weapons and other devices that the Freeman invented to survive in the desert. After successful negotiations, the Duke and his son meet with Arrakis's planetary scientist, Dr. Lyot Kynes. The woman, who is a representative of the Freeman, inspects the equipment and realizes that Paul is the only one who did everything right, as if he knew about it in advance, which only confirms her assumptions about him. After heading out into the desert, the group observes spice mining and learns about the dangers involved. At some point, they notice a giant worm moving under the sand. A rescue operation begins, 
but one of the aircraft's claws is damaged and it cannot hook the crawler to transport it. Leto cherishes people and orders to save the team by taking her on board. Paul rushes out of the helicopter, but inhales the spice-laden air, which causes him to get lost in time and space, immersed in another vision. He is rescued at the last moment by Gurney, after which the worm drags the crawler underground. Upon his return, Dr. Yue examines the guy and notes the high concentration of spice in his blood, which led to a clouding of his mind. After the doctor leaves, Paul tells his mother about strange visions and a girl calling him to her. He saw how she pierces him with a knife instead of a kiss and knows that her mother is expecting a second child. Meanwhile, the house Harkonnen Mentat arrives on the Emperor's planet to ask for a few squads to successfully attack and exterminate the Atreides family. After the assassination attempt on his son, Leto strengthened the guard, but this does not save, since the enemy is inside. Under the cover of night, an unknown person immobilizes the guards and disables Arakeen's power shields so that the enemy army crushes the Atreides forces. A little later, Leto cannot sleep because of the strange lights and goes out into the corridor. Here he finds his wife's wounded assistant and activates a protective field, but it does not save from a dart that has flown into the back, paralyzing the duke. It turns out that the traitor was Dr. Yue. Gurney and the other warriors learn that the shields and defenses have been disabled. Declaring a general alarm, they run out into the street and decide to take the warships to raise the ships into the air, but the Harkonnen army and the Sardaukar attack earlier, destroying most of the weapons. Not wanting to give up, hundreds of warriors enter into a head-on duel with the enemy, but they are surrounded, because of which most of them lose their lives. Yue was not a bad person and is ready for the last time to help the Duke, whom he served for more than one year. Taking the signet, he promises to give it to the floor and offers to insert a tooth that hides a capsule with poisonous gas in it. The doctor will help Paul and Jessica, but in return, asks to take the life of the Baron by exhaling gas vapors in his face. Glossu Raban, the Baron's nephew who leads the enemy army, executes the remaining opponents in order to complete the military coup and return control over the sand planet. Duncan faces several enemies and takes their lives, after which he realizes that the best thing to do is to run. Jessica and Paul are captured in order to be sent to the desert, which can become their grave. Thus, the Baron hopes to keep his word to the Reverend Mother, but at the same time, interrupt the Leto family once and for all. Getting to the surface, Duncan takes the lives of several more warriors, after which he captures the ornithopter and, skillfully moving away from the laser beam, escapes. In flight, the warriors discuss what to do with Jessica and her son. One of the soldiers offers to throw the guy out and take advantage of the defenseless woman. Not allowing his mother to be offended, Paul tries to use the Bene Gesserit's controlling voice, but fails. Jessica asks for the right tone, and at the last moment, Paul manages to get the soldier to remove the gag from his mother's mouth. The woman controls the kidnappers, as a result of which they take the life of each other. After landing in the middle of the desert, father and son find a survival kit left behind by Yue and see their palace go up in flames. Baron Vladimir organizes a festive dinner, seating Leto, naked and immobilized, in front of him. Yue asks to let his wife go, but the vile Baron does not keep his word and takes his life. Paul, hiding with his mother in a small tent, finds a note from the doctor and a signet from his father in a survival kit. At the same time, Leto bites through the poison capsule to get rid of Vladimir and his henchmen. Jessica feels that her husband has fallen into an eternal sleep, placing even greater hopes on her son. At dawn, Duncan finds Kynes and asks her for help in finding and rescuing the Duke's family. Meanwhile, it turns out that the Baron is wounded, but survived, because a minute before the poisoning, he managed to activate a protective force field. Inhaling a little spice, Paul sees a future in which he becomes a warrior of one of the armies and realizes that a terrible war is coming that can change the world. A little later, Paul accepts his fate and puts on his father's signet, wanting to continue his work. After getting out of the tent, the son and mother meet Kynes and Duncan, who have arrived to save them. The survivors go to an old ecological station to come up with a plan for how to proceed while under the protection of the Freemans. The Sardaukar soon track them down and land nearby, preparing to attack. Acoustic tricks help the Freemen hear enemies and prepare an ambush, but they outnumber them. 
Sensing something amiss, Duncan opens the door and notices the Sardaukar approaching. After sacrificing himself, he stays in the hallway and blocks the door so Jessica and Paul can escape. In an unequal battle, a man takes the lives of a dozen fighters, but they wound him. Jessica feels the life force draining from Duncan and suggests they run. With the last of his strength, the weapons master sends a couple more Sardaukars to the other world, after which he falls asleep forever. Duncan, the Freeman, and others sacrifice themselves to save the Atreides family. Kynes realizes that no one can escape, so he sends his son and mother through another tunnel leading to the Ornithopter. While Paul and Jessica successfully take off and escape the scene, the woman sets up a device that creates rhythmic movements to attract a huge worm. At some point, the Sardaukar find and wound her, but Kynes continues to pound on the ground. Soon, the giant worm finds and devours the woman along with the remaining enemies. Paul and Jessica move towards the sandstorm, but they are chased by three flying ships, after which the Ornithopter attacks with missiles. Hiding in a sandstorm, the guy leaves from the missiles pursuing him. At some point, he plunges into another vision and lets go of control, realizing that he is doing the right thing. Meanwhile, the Baron undergoes recovery from an assassination attempt and passes command of Arrakis to his cruel nephew, Raban. He reports that the Atreides family could not survive in a sandstorm, but Vladimir is more interested in the collection and production of spices. Resuming control, Paul tries to land the Ornithopter, but almost all of his wings are torn off. After making a rough landing, the son and mother change into special protective suits and go in search of the Freeman. Paul determines the direction of movement, after which he suggests repeating the steps of the local tribes so as not to attract a giant worm. Moving at night, the family realizes that they made a mistake and wandered into the drum sands. The worm not only heard them, but is rapidly approaching. Paul and Jessica flee for their lives, when suddenly the monster crawls out. At the last moment, he does not attack them, as someone subdued the worm and forced him to retreat. They soon realize that they found the Freeman and one of them scared the monster away. Paul asks for asylum for himself and his mother, but not everyone is happy about it. Stilgar is ready to accept the guy, but Jameis is categorically against it, considering him unworthy. Jessica proves her strength in a head-to-head -head duel with the Freeman leader, but Jameis is not convinced and refuses to accompany the family to the hideout. Here Paul meets the girl Chani, who appeared in his visions. She gives the guy her blade, made from the fang of a worm, but believes that this will not help him. Jameis challenges Paul to a duel, and the guy accepts the challenge. At dawn, a man and a guy collide in a ritual battle. Paul gains the upper hand without any problems, but cannot deliver the final blow since he did not take the life of a person. Realizing that only one will come out of the battle alive, he sends Jameis to the next world. Stilgar offers the guy to take a place in the Freeman tribe. Jessica is against it and asks to organize a ship to escape to her home planet. But Paul is ready to join the local sand inhabitants in order to fulfill the goal of the late father, to bring peace to Arrakis. We hope you enjoyed watching. We're looking forward to see you again. Just go to our channel to watch stunning recaps. Thanks for that. See you soon.